Right lads, in the last episode we had a very, very good start to the season. We won our first four games, two against Man City, one in the FA Community Shield final and then against United and Nottingham Forest. As well as that, we signed Diogo Jota from Liverpool for £80 million. We also signed Saavedra as a backup goalkeeper and Sergio Roberto from Barcelona. We've loaned out a few players including selling Isaac Hayden and Jeff Hendrick. Just a bit of squad depth which we don't really need anymore. They were on loan last season for the most part and uh, a few youth academy players have dropped out to different teams on loan. Mostly, to be fair, have gone to Spain, which is quite quite a weird thing that they've all gone to Spain. Hey, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Four of them have gone to Spain out of seven. That is quite bizarre. But with more players still to sell and £70 million in the budget to play with, I've got one player in my mind who I'm going to sign. Let's see who it is. We did try and sign this man last season, but Leipzig refused to budge on the £60 million asking price. So now I've got £70 million, we can actually afford him. £56.9 million is a good offer, to be fair, from Leipzig. I'm going to try and do 52 I think. Try and get him a little bit lower. If we can get it over the line, £53 million for Jessica Gavardial. A little bit unrealistic, but we can say... Law-wise, there's some sort of clause in his contract. So no release clause, we're gonna offer him £100,000 a week to make it a realistic signing, if we can actually agree with that. Imagine if he rejects it on 43K a week. Of course he's accepted it. Let's see him holding this shirt and see what the board have to say about this signing. What a signing it should be though. Here he is. What a, what a signing this is. I don't even have words to express the delight. Eddie Howe's probably loving it as well. As if the board, have managed to agree a fee for Josh Gugvoy. Let's see what the board have to say about the signing though as well. They could say not a good signing, but I would imagine, yeah, it's an A. Yeah, and to be fair, excellent deal on the cards. What a fantastic player this guy's in real life. One of the leading central defenders in the world now, to be fair. He's a great player to add to our defensive line. But we have also got some offers fielded from other clubs. Fabian Shares had a 15 million pound offer from Manchester City. And unfortunately for us, as much as I love Fabian Cher, you guys don't want him anymore. He has actually failed uh, as the lowest ranked player in the current, I think it was a four person outvote. And he obviously failed it with Pope, Trippier and Botman. Yeah, Botman, of course. So yeah, Shah's going 50 million pounds to Man City. Let's try and get that done before the deadline day. And uh, Nick Pope's had a 30 million pound bid from Leipzig. We're not going to sell him just yet, potentially in January. And Sean Longstaff's got a bit of £19 million from Wolves, which I think, unfortunately, again, we're going to have to accept it because we don't need him anymore. He's only extra players in our midfield, and I think it's time for him to move on. And with those sales, this is what the completed squad looks like for the probably rest of the season. We'll probably start a new player in January, of course, as we normally do a bit of extra squad death. But that's what we've got. That's what we're working with at the moment. A lot of players just sat on the reserves, aren't really going to play, but the, the main bunch including the guys on the bench, they're going to play most of the games and also we can sign some players back off their uh, loan spells. So this is how the episode looks like in the breakdown. The first games will be played against Wolves and Barcelona. So I'm going to simulate then against Sheffield United and Leicester City. We've then got a match highlight sim against Crystal Palace, another simulation against Celtic and then probably going to finish it off with a game to play against Burnley. So let's get into this Wolves game, see what the teams are. Come on, you boys, let's win. Here we go. It is a big game indeed. Wolverhampton Wanderers, though, are currently sitting bottom of the Premier League after three games on zero points. Hopefully, we can add more pain to their dismal start to the season. We start with our team before we kick off. Of course, Pope starts in goal with the back four of Trippier, Guehi, Botman and Gavardi are making his league debut. Midfield three, Depal, Gimaraes and Willock, as you'd expect, with the front three of Jota, Isak and Gucci St. Maximin. What a team that is. Let's hope for a comfortable first victory in this first episode. Isak. Need a good return through ball. Strauch's not got pace to catch St. Maximum. St. Maximum through on goal. 1-0. Good save by Jose Sarr. Great goalkeeping. Got to look for a big man in the box. Obviously, that man is Diogo Jota. It is a good ball. Into it. Jota. Oh, it's gone in. Oh, my God. I was lost for words because I weren't quite sure what happened with the flight of the ball. Forget how bad St. James's Park is for uh, shadows on the pitch. But that is a really, really bad bit of goalkeeping by Jose Sarr. Good ball in. Don't get me wrong. Should be saving it though, keeper. That is that is 1-0 Newcastle. Isak looking for the quick one-two between the pair. Benjamin Hendricks can't get near him. St. Maxman, can he recompense for his shot early? Right, it's a great save by Jose Sarr. It's a decent little first half. 1-0 up against Wolves. And uh, Jota scoring the important goal against his former employers. Isaac makes a run. Isak trying to get past his man. Oh, it's good defending. Ricochets back to the pal. Back to St. Maximum. Joe Willock to make it to. 
hopefully seal the win as well. That is a bit lucky, but it's still good football and a great build-up goal. 2-0 Newcastle. As I say, it's a bit lucky. Ricochets a few seconds, but it's a good bit of skill there. And uh, Willock has his first goal of the season. Great start. Now trying to make a run, start an attack again. It's a good ball towards Isak. Cody can't keep up. Alexander Isak, can he score again? Yes, he can. Brilliant little bit of counter-attacking play after under so much pressure. A great save by Nick Pope. And Isak seals the victory. 3-0 Newcastle, game over. Game over! Tell you what, that is a very, very solid 3-0 victory against the Premier League's bottom side. Not surprisingly though, Jota is the man of the match against his former side. The goal and assist for him, 7.9 rating, very, very well deserved indeed. Obviously, Isaac scored, so did Willock and St. Maximin got the other assist along with Kieran Trippier, who got an assist from a corner for Jota's header. So yeah, very good performance indeed. Pog gets a 7.4 after making one save. You know, that sounds realistic and uh, Longstaff doesn't have much luck coming back to play his former side. So now to the Barcelona game, guys. Massive game in store for us indeed. Hopefully we get the win. First Champions League game we've had in about 23 years. Let's get into it. Here we go. A massive game at the new Camp. Also got the El Libertadores on FIFA, but that doesn't matter. Let's see this Barcelona side on our side before we kick off. I am so nervous with this one. Here we see the Barcelona side for this massive game. The Stegen starts to go. They've got the Hernandez brothers, Lucas and Theo Hernandez as part of their back four. That is weird. You see Koundé, Des is the rest of the back four with Kessi, Pedri and De Jong as the midfield three. And then Ziyech, Lewandowski and Ferran Torres. Ferran Torres, yeah, is the front three. What a team that is. But here is the most impressive team you're going to see. Pope starts in goal for us. We've got the back four of Trippier, Botman, Ivan Fresneda and Joska Gavardi as the back four. Two left foot centre backs. Bit risky, but we'll see how it works. Midfield three, Gimaraes, Joelinton and Depal with Vega, St. Maxman and Jota as the front three. Let's get these first highlights. Massive game. Come on, Newcastle. Oh, I see that run. St. Maxman's running against Koundé, it's a great run in the middle. Can he have a shot against a Stegen? It's 1-0 Newcastle already. I can't believe we're 1-0 up inside nine minutes. No one was pressing him for some reason. And that is a brilliant way to mark our first Champions League game in however long it is. What a goal from St. Maximin, a solo goal special. Special? I think I meant to say special, they're not special, but still, great run. What a finish to Stegen, has no chance. Vega does really, really well to get away from Kessie. Look at that ball to St. Maximin again. St. Maximin to make it two, and Barcelona inside 20 minutes at the new Camp are being absolutely run ragged by the French wizard that is Alan St. Maximin. What a start to this game. What a goal again. It's just well played by Vega as well. Running through past Kessie and a fantastic finish past to Stegen. 2-0 Newcastle. Oh, they're struggling, Barca. They really are. They're on the ropes in this game. Oh, they are looking for that through ball. Though. I see it. Lewandowski's through on goal. He shoots against Pope. And as I say, they're on the ropes. Barca come back into it. It's a good goal by Lewa this time. Poor defending, though, by the AI. It's a great first half from us, but I think... I'm going to make some subs because I'm a bit unsure about some of these players out there at the moment. So the first up we're going to make, we're going to bring off Freyze Nader for Matt Target. And we're also going to bring on Miguel Almiron for Rodrigo De Paul. I think Freyze Nader's really struggled with Hakim Ziyech. And I think Target, even though he's slower, sort of has the physical credentials and actual defensive ability to, to marshal him a little bit better. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Obviously, Almiron's come on in the middle for De Paul as well. And hopefully these changes have a positive impact on the game and we don't end up losing by 3 or 4 2. Really, it was reflected in the man of the match choices. Alan St. Max went with two goals, fully deserved and was fully merited in the man of the match. And um, I mean, overall, Botman was fantastic as well. Kept Lewandowski quiet for the majority of the game. But to Stegen, I think, was their difference factor because he made a few good saves at the end of the game. But, you know, it is what it is. We've got two simulations now. And I think the first is against someone like Palace, potentially, or Sheffield United. One of the two. So we do indeed beat Sheffield United by four goals to nil at Bramall Lane. Isak opens the score in the seventh minute, and then DePaul gets two just after the restart before Diogo Jota scores the fourth goal of the game in the 75th minute. 
and if Powell gets a perfect 10 rating for a phenomenal 4-0 win. So yeah, fantastic stuff. Keelan Watts makes his opening game of the season, his first ever start for Newcastle. And it's a very good comprehensive victory for us before we go on to the next game of the episode, which is a cup tie. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know what it's against, but I hope we win. I think it might be Leicester, actually. It was indeed a very, very hard second round draw, which we got against Leicester City, but we did beat them 3-1 away at the King Power. Again, target scores and Depau gets another brace in back-to-back -back games as Vestergaard scores in between our second and third goals. But yeah, Depau gets man of the match again, 9.6 rating. Fantastic for the second team, to be fair, if you see the faces on the pitch. Callum Wilson is still playing. I think my face comes up. Yeah, it does. But, um, I mean, the second team was fantastic there. Saavedra making his first start for Newcastle. Great, great result before this next game against Crystal Palace, which will be a match highlight sim. So let's get into that. We don't see the teams. Hopefully we get another win in the Premier League. So another St. James's Park occasion. We've now got Dan Burns. Dan, actually, Dan Burns captains Crystal Palace. Now we've got Dan Burns, Crystal Palace. Let's see these first highlights. Can Jota get the better? of the Danish international. He's definitely got the pace on him. Jota coming through. Can he find the right pass towards Alexander Isak? Yes, he can. Great, great start to this game. And Isak puts us 1-0 ahead. Fantastic stuff from the Swedish striker. I tend not to score them very often. So hopefully we do this time. Isak against Jan Musso. Sends the keeper. Well, he doesn't send him anywhere. The keeper's rooted to the spot. That's another classic football saying. Isak gets his second. And this game looks like a win already. Oh. It is a good run, to be fair. Klein can't keep up either. Can anyone else? Good ball in towards Isak. Can he get his hat trick? Yes, he can. Dinks it the reverse side of the keeper. This is a tremendous game so far for us. Hopefully, that's the last highlight. 3 0, I'm happy with. I'm not even done yet. Jota on the attack. I feel a goal coming. I really do. Jota, chance to shoot. Comes off Isak. Can it ricochet straight in front of him? Oh my god, this is Isak's world and we're all just living in it. Isak makes it four and this is uh, embarrassment for Palace now. Yeah, no surprises there. Great performance by Isak. Nick Pope got an 8.4 apparently. He did make a penalty save to be fair. And Gucci sent Maxman gets an 8.3. 18 shots, 6 chances created. 4 taken by Alexander Isak. What a result which puts us on track for simulation against Celtics. Let's see how we're doing that. Hopefully another victory. So we've cruised to a 5-0 victory against the Dons at St. James's Park. Isak hits a hat-trick either side of half-time. And Joe Wellington and DePaul add to their goals for the season. 5-0 against Celtic. We're going to sim Burnley next. And then we're actually going to play against Norwich to bring it to eight games this episode. So let's see how we do against Burnley. Hopefully another win against Company's men. This game is a little bit more complicated as Burnley score both their chances they've had in this game. Galata opens, sorry, Galata, Galaretta opens a scoring for Burnley. Jota scores to equalise for us. Isak scores in the 56th and then De Pau scores in the 70th. Zarui scores for them, but we still win by three goes to two. And Jota gets an 8.4. Fantastic performance from him again. And the rest of the front three, to be fair, very, very good game indeed. Let's get into this Norwich game at St. James's Park. They are inside the bottom three, I believe, as well. So hopefully we can get a thump in. Fairly easy game, straightforward, I'd imagine, against Norwich. Top versus bottom. Gordon comes in to replace St. Maximin. Let's see these first highlights. No team news to announce, really. Come on, Newcastle. Well, DePau. Ball ricochets to Norwich. And Norwich are 1-0 ahead already. Oh, my God. Six minutes in. And Norwich take a shock lead. I'll tell you what, I am shocked. What a goal that was, though. 1-0 Norwich. Willock. Trying to get away from Milot Rashica. It's a good little run from Willock. Isak on the end of it. Isak, can he make it level in the game? It's an own goal off Oma Bomadile. And that is very, very fortunate. It's a good save by Angus Gunn as well, to be fair. But Isak profits. And so do we. 1-1 in the game. As I say, a hint of fortune there. 15 minutes later. Isak. Oh, Gordon makes the run. Anthony Gordon, what a save again by Angus Gunn. And Norwich are level at half-time. Great goalkeeping there. So half-time, a couple of players not exactly doing it for me. Gordon being one of them. Vega's going to come on for him. Joelinton's going to come on for Joseph Willock. And you know what? For the time being, I think we're all right with that. Let's hope it makes a difference. We need to win this game shortly. Isak, Joelinton on goal, Joelinton to make it 2-1, he's come on three minutes on the pitch and Joelinton, who's recently 
won the battle with Sean Longstaff over fourth choice midfielder makes it 2-1 that's a good goal to be fair I, I shouldn't have done him so dirty when I said that good play by Isak Vega another sub won the ball back 2-1 Newcastle we need to push on for more Vega getting away from his man very very well Alexis Vega pulls it back towards the man Joe Ellington in towards Isak Joe Ellington to Isak makes it 3-1 that went way too easy Again, Joe Ellington's involved in the goal. He's been phenomenal since coming on. So was Vega as well. He's got two second assists. But Isak with both goals. Fantastic stuff. 3-1 Newcastle. Oh, DePaul's sprinted away from Omar Bamadile. It's good play by DePaul. Can he make it four? Yes, he can. That is absolutely ravenous from DePaul. Fantastic play from our midfield tight. And just run straight through the middle of the uh, Norwich defence. And, I mean... That goes to show how good we are and how poor they are. This one's worthy of highlights. Great solo run. Hopefully, I'd suggest that seals the win. An excellent 4-1 victory for us. And uh, Norwich remain at the foot of the table. Isak is given the match balls around the match with three assists. Sorry, three assists, three contributions, two assists, one goal. And uh, Joe Wellington, I think, I, I would say personally, Joe Wellington was the best player on the pitch in that game. He obviously got one goal and one assist, but his impact off the bench... As well as Vegas as well. They were both phenomenal. And uh, we do get a deserved win as we move on to the uh, final part of this episode. So let's see this league table and wrap this one up. So as anticipated, we are top of the Premier League. Eight wins out of eight and 24 points from 24. Liverpool and Chelsea remain the only two other unbeaten sides in the league, having drawn two games each, but both on 20 points. West Ham are on 19, City on 16. Where the hell? On Man United and Arsenal, 10 points and 8 points respectively. How shocking that is. So, on into the next episode, we do start with an away game against Champions League opposition against RB Salzburg. They play the Gunners back to back, first away in the Premier League. We'll probably play that, I'd imagine, then a simulation of the Cup because I'm not playing the Carabao Cup. I literally couldn't care less about it. Then we've got West Ham at home, again, another Premier League affair, then another Champions League game against Salzburg and then Leicester and Leeds. To wrap this episode up, I can't imagine what order we're going to play these games. We normally play three out of seven or eight games, so uh, we could end up playing Barcelona to finish off on. I really don't know. But um, as always, I really appreciate watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch another video on the channel very, very soon. Thank you very much. Cheers.